Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we are on the test server. This is one day before the patch is actually going to drop. I'm able to show you some stuff nice and early. Uh, this video, we're going to go through some of the new quality of life changes. We're going to test out the damage on the new fusion. We're going to test out the damage on Wode. Uh, and we're going to look at some of the, the kind of nice quality of life stuff. I will be dropping a separate video for like a full playtest of the fusion and a full playtest of Wode since her change, um, which seems to be the, like the best change of the bunch for those epics. Can you believe it? I'm talking about Wode painted as uh, maybe a viable champion here. But anyway, let's jump around and see what's going on. The first thing we're going to look at then is the Forge. The Forge has had a mini rework. Um, and I tell you what, it's just kind of in line with what I was asking for. I was like, look, do we want to see the animation per item over and over again? Um, and you know, hats off to someone like Barbstoff who's managed to do a forge selling tool, albeit, you know, some of that stuff should just be in game. You know, if I want to tell it a three or four star is an instant sell, then let me do it in game, uh, rather than wait, 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 shadow legend. So let's have a look then you can, we don't have a lot of stuff like this in the test server, but you can kind of load up with whatever you've got in terms of charms and stuff like that still hit the times 10 what it will do is use up what you've got basically so it will use up like these two and then for the other eight it will just carry on as if they were not there it will remember now what type of forge that you do so if you're normally a five to six star dude that's where it will keep you as long as you've got the materials if you don't have the materials go anywhere like that then it'll just drop down to the next one down um which is, is a decent enough quality of life change, I think. So let's just see the 10 pop. Oh, mama. Um, so we get the one animation, but it comes up, you know what? Like something else in the game, it comes up as if we were summoning uh, shards. You know what? I reckon it's probably a year ago I did a video where it was like, this is what I want. Why don't you just give us a 10 pull like the shard summoning? Uh, I mean, whichever dev has worked on this for the last year, thank you so much. So, and if you want it much quicker than that, you can go again, 10 pull, and you can just one tap it like again, like a shard set up, pop. <laughs> it even drops in with the lightning. Love it. Love it. And then from here, can we sell? Yeah, we can sell from here. It's a shame we can't like tick, 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 sell. Like if, if you just know straight up, you don't want to have to see the pieces each one by one, but we're moving on. It's definitely an improvement of where we were. So the button here is collect rather than uh, any, like, again, there should just be another option there, collect or uh, draw another 10 pool. But little things like this, hopefully they'll just tweak it again a bit more over time, but it's definitely an improvement of where we were. You get now the kind of, I guess the lightning buzz that you get from a shard pool in the forge. Oh, double lightning. Have you seen it before? Um, and there you go. So. The forge quality of life stuff i think is pretty good let me just check there's nothing else in the forge here i think the only other thing is like if they've got a quest i don't know if i've got them here let's just check if we've got an advanced quest oh, i should have done it before like this one if i'd said on the advanced quest take me there it would have taken me straight to perception gear instead of just any old like forge area so it would have taken me to uh, exactly what i was looking for which would have been better so yeah, all in all, forge changes, I'd say pretty good. Still a bit of a way to go, but definitely improvement of where we were. So I'm sure people will ask, the tier changing for tag team is coming. It's coming tomorrow, but uh, we don't see that change here because there's just not any live players on the test server. Um, and all that's going to do, so we're basically going to have double, double, just under double, just over double here. Double, double, double. Double. So pretty much, you know, Nyon doubled up all of the tiers above um, bronze. Bronze has gone up by like 20k here, uh, 25k, and 40k. So significant moves. We're talking another couple of hundred thousand players outside of bronze one now. And I would say, you know, on the free to play, 90 odd days in, I could probably squeeze my way into bronze two in the current system on the free to play. So yeah, it probably takes a good two to three months before you're even thinking about moving up. Um, but obviously, when you do move up, 
So you then start to progress at a better rate. But this has been the kind of real blocker. Getting into silver and then above silver for people that play the game for a while, it's really hard to do. And certainly pushing into gold and holding like gold three and four has been insanely hard to do. So uh, hopefully more people now will be able to do that. I can't really show you much there though. The other thing I can just quickly show you, it's, it's a kind of good quality of life change, I think. I haven't really got a situation where I've had to use it yet, but basically we now have a turn count. Um, let me just read the thing as it's going through here. So I'm going to introduce a turn count. See, it's over here. You'll see both the current turn and the maximum number of turns available in Doom Tower Battles. I'm not seeing the max number of turns right now, but maybe that's a test server thing. Um, for everything else, you'll get a max number of turns displayed once you approach the limit. So once you get close to the limit, it will start flashing up in some way. Upon reaching a particularly high number of turns, you'll also get notified um, saying you're running out of time. Finally, the game will pause and give you one last notification when you have only a few turns left, unless it's Demon Lord or Hydra Battle, or you're running multi-battles. Then there'll be no pause. So if you're running multi-battles, and you kind of hit your turn limit, it will end and basically you'll just go again with the next battle. So this is mainly relevant for when you've got those stupid annoying champions in the waves that are unkillable when you turn me to control them. Yeah, this is so annoying. It's like, I wish they would just take them out of the waves, honestly, but they've not done that. They've got a, they've got a way at least of resetting. So if you've got something running all day long, at least when you come back to the PC, you won't be running that same one fight all your life. You'll actually be um, able to kind of come out of it. So we'll see how that plays out. We'll see if that's what we needed. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not a major change. So anyway, let's jump on to these, these couple of champion changes. All I'm going to show in this video is some damage um, of the new dude and of Woad. So that's the two ones I'm most excited for. And then I'll do a separate video playtesting both of these champions um, separate to this. So first one then, we've got Bivald of the Thorn with his massive uh, hammer. Little thorn sticking out of it. Pretty cool. He's got, a storm, uh, he's got like a Jesus-style thorn um, crown. What has he got on his back? Is that somewhere where you store your axe or your hammer? Not sure. It looks more like... Almost like a, a partition for when he gets changed. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe when he gets changed, he doesn't want people to see his pants. So he's got a, a mini partition here. Um, he's got some weird dangly balls. And <laughs> that is all that's going on there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so we've got an HP-based champion here, which I do like HP-based champions, but there's very few in the game which do significant damage. Okay, and that's why maximum damage videos are interesting. Even if you think it's unrealistic gear, it doesn't matter. It's a benchmark of one thing versus another. That's all it is. Uh, so we've got here, attacks an enemy, 30% chance to provoke. Does book up to 50%. So 50-50 provoke one is A1 if you've got the accuracy to do it. Also heals the ally with the lowest HP by 15% of the damage that he does. That's why damage is actually important in his kit. His A1 and his A3 both rely on him hitting to do stuff. So actually, it's quite important that they do hit. Um, the Provoke can be placed even if this attack lands as a weak hit. So there's no affinity barriers for this dude to land his abilities. Um, we get 10% more damage from books. We've got here an A2. Attacks all enemies two times. First hit. Books to 100% chance of putting Provoke out there. So 100% AoE Provoke. Second hit. 100% AoE Leech. Uh, also places strength on himself. So he's provoking. Then he's taking 25% less damage. Pretty cool. Um, and these could be landed on weak hits as well. 10% more damage on books. Three turn cooldowns actually really short on an ability like this. And then we've got another AoE then on his A3. So AoE damage increases by 5% for each debuff on an enemy. So we, we kind of talked this through, me and Saf from HH Gaming. We wondered if it would be five, like damage increases for 5% everywhere. So on Spider, the damage would be nuts. Uh, it's not, it is just based on per individual target enemy, which is a shame, but uh, it's probably the way it should be. So we've got here as well, 
also heals all allies by 20% of the damage inflicted. Again, it's important that it's, it's based on his damage. And places a shield for 20% of the damage inflicted. So this is a major heal stroke shield ability. Whilst hopefully hitting hard as well. So we will see if that's the case. Passive as well. Uh, when there's enemies under provoke. Basically everyone takes a straight 15% less damage. I didn't actually pick up on this in my first video about this dude. But it's a really valid point. Like, it's very rare that there's going to be a situation that it's not this dude being hit. Yeah? So, decreases the damage taken by all allies from enemies under provoke. Clearly, whoever's provoked them is going to be the person who takes the 15% less damage. So, it's probably just going to be this dude. I guess the only difference to that is if you're running two provoked champions in a team. Let's say you were running like a, a Visix here. Uh, where's her provoke? And she's got this ability out. Then with her provoke, she would also take 15% less damage if this dude was in the mix. But yeah, generally it's just him uh, taking his own damage reduction buff. He's got HP in all battles as well. And um, let's see what he can do. Let's get him onto Dragon. Let's just do like a basic damage test. Uh, and as I say, we will do a full video on this dude uh, in the future. So before we jump into the other two champions we're going to test, I'm just going to show you damage on Magnar with exactly the same gear these other two have done a run. Uh, so we've got here 93k health, 212 crit damage with Helm Smasher on as well. Magnar kind of, you know, mainly considered to be the best in class for an HP-based damage dealer. So Magnar's A1 then, it's a single hitter, drop, gives you drop defense as well. This isn't the best of his abilities, by the way, but it's worth a look. So 100 odd K is actually not that strong. Not that strong. So his A2 is where it's at for this dude. He's got AoE ability. It's really, really strong for an HP based dude. We've got like basically, what's that? 230K worth of damage on the A2. And then his A3, which will spread debuffs as well, 205K. So a lot of people rave about this dude. Like I've done a lot of damage testing with this type of setup. And honestly, like. Compared to non-HP based champions, you know, in, in a similar sort of setup, he's not crazy. Okay then, so defend, uh, sorry, HP based champions, they cannot get an HP buff like attack based champions or defense based champions can. So we need as much HP as we can get. We've got HP in all battles from his aura. We're going with the um, crit buffs from, or the damage buffs from Gurptuck and Bad L. I'm putting a load of debuffs out there because his... Uh, his ability scales from debuff, so we will see that in a minute. I'm going to get up to eight debuffs on each enemy. Uh, let's just have a little tap over here. Okay, we're on level 19. So we're going to go A1 first. Will we get a decent hit out of the A1? 109k on the A1. We're talking like, if we're talking top tier damage dealer A1s, Phoenix blows people up for about, for about 600k, I think. Let's test his A2 then. A2, um, double hitter here. Let's see what we've got on this. 70 followed by 60. Yikes, that's pretty damn weak. That's pretty lousy. Okay, we're praying to RN Jesus that this A3 hits hard here. This is probably his like signature move, in my opinion, like the shielding and the healing is going to need to be decent here. 200k across the board. Um, kind of, I feel like it needed to be bigger. If you bear in mind the amount of damage buffs I've got alongside him here with Bad L and Gurptuck, uh, you know, the gear that he's wearing is about as good as, it's not as good as it gets. I'm on the a test server so i'm not like using an optimizer but we've got savage gear on you know 212 crit damage 105k health i've slowed him right down to make this happen without the accuracy he needs this isn't like an everyday build here this is like a this is as hard as i think he's gonna hit type of build so yeah so that's disappointing to say the least i'm gonna build woad out in the same gear um and see what she can do on her a1 and a3 as well Okay then, Wode is built out the same. Wode has got the same gear on, apart from different, slightly different artifacts, but pretty much gets us to a similar place. A base HP is lower, that's why our HP is lower here. But we've got 212 crit damage, 92k HP. Um, and she has got now 
block active skills um i mean it's basically the same ability this is her main ability on her a1 but all of the damage is now based from hp instead of a, a, a kind of blend of hp and attack the a2 doesn't hit but it's now her signature move and i'll tell you now this move i think is awesome by the way so this could be uh her saving grace and then her a3 again just based off hp so we're going to test this out and see what she does with her single target stuff in that same type of setup I really wish they'd given her buffs, um, as in like a supporting champ that buffs alongside what they've done with her A2. So if her A3 was like, gives your team increased defense or, you know, some sort of cleanse mechanic or something, just I feel like they should have done something different with her A3 to make her really shine with this rework. I think then you've got a champion. Uh, we don't have an HP aura here as well. So she's quite a lot more. Um, stunted shall we say than what we just saw there with uh bivald let's get the buffs and stuff going you can just clean out this one so let's check out the a1 single target it's a double hit try this 60 and 60 again like i mean pretty similar to bivald right weak source is what we're saying so not the best hit there unfortunately considering her build her build is full damage right now it's not built she's not built support unit good thing with doing this type of test is it just allows you to decide whether or not you're going to put any sort of damage into her kit or not or if you literally just go for you know full heal so a3 then see what we got 210 it's okay nothing more than okay so she has not got any any kind of crazy damage going on She's all about that heal. So look, let's just round the video off then. We've seen Magna, we've seen Wode, we've seen Bivalda, the Thorn, in terms of their damage numbers. And we've got some, some fact stuff going on here from Saf. So Saf's looked at the multipliers. Looks like we've got a 0.25 multiplier on his, his A1. We've got a 0.15 times 2 on his A2. And we've got a 0.25 multiplier on his A3. The A3, which was the big event, um, if there's two debuffs out there, and that's it, then he's about 60% weaker than Magnar. If there's 10, like you saw with me, then he's about 20% weaker than Magnar. Uh, but, but, but don't forget, Magnar's best in class here. So a reasonable hit, and it has to be a reasonable hit. You do need to build him for damage to get any of his kind of main stuff away. Um, feels like he's going to be a pretty good mid-game legendary champion we don't know if they're going to do something with provoke we're seeing a lot of provoke champions coming out at the moment so i'm not sure if there's going to be a hydra head that can be provoked in some way um but other than that provoke is good for wave control and sort of general progression in stuff like doom tower and faction wars so you know i don't think this dude is going to be getting into like big end game teams um, but I will do a full play test and show that as a separate video. Uh, anyway, guys, I've been Hell Hades. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you later.